Seven. Six. It can't be. That's inside the room. It's reading right, man. Look. Well, you're not reading it right. Five meters, man. Four. What the hell? Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Give me the light. Welcome to the Calling It Rant. I'm Sly. And I'm the Chief here for Spook. Spook's a little bit under the weather, that which is why this rant is late. Chief, you were with the rant back in 1999 when we first started online. I, I was, I was. I was one of the uh, inaugural uh, riders for the rant. Yeah, and there's been a lot of heartache since then. Uh, a lot of heartache. One, uh, one glorious year as we see 2010 premieres. Yep. So what do you think about the game against Carlton? How good was it? How good is the game against Carlton? As as ScoMo, how good is that? How good really, is that day? You're quoting ScoMo. I'm, well, you have got to quote somebody. <laughs> I actually think, honestly, it's the best time in the way win in my history following the club because there's probably been other wins which have been you know close games or come from behind, but this game to have like a top four spot sitting there, and if we won to bundle them out of the finals. There's so many, so much stakes involved, and to actually accomplish that, because usually with four, it's a win on so many levels. Yeah, we get to the top four. Carlton gets out. We're all happy. It's one point. They're all miserable. And one point. (laughs) It's one point. You can't go wrong. That's what I'm saying. Usually, you know, like going back in the history of the club, I remember in 2006 we were fourth and we lost to Essendon, who were last, and we dropped from fourth to sixth or something. In '81, last game of the year, we lost to Fitzroy. Went from first to third. Pretty much cost us the flag. When those stakes are there, like Carlton's beat us in our centenary game, they beat us in the Millennium game. When the stakes are there, we seem to fail. This is like actually... Oh, you can't... How, we're down four goals at a quarter time, a three-quarter time. They looked like they had it all on us. And then, just, then well, just, okay. it's not just that, it's the comeback as well. You're well, love let's it. So, first half, we really controlled the game, controlled the tempo. Should have probably been four or five goals up. Yeah. We're a little bit wasted, which is funny after sort of previously, you know, we're lauded for um, being efficient going forward. This time going forward, we seem to bomb it a lot. Yeah, but again, we um, we just keep losing the, the contested possession and, and around the ball. So Thanks, even, even, oh, just, But it's, yeah, it's going to cost us one day. Oh, yeah, know? we had the opportunity. Like, we kept them down to two goals. Yeah, yeah that's that brilliant uh, defensive efforts. And then that third quarter, they got on top. I don't want some to... bo- I can. There was some bodgy free kicks. Not not some. It was like twelve to two, I believe, in favour of them. Yeah. The AFL's actually come out and said that Do- Doherty won where he tackled um the goey and just as soon as, as soon as the goey got it, he got tackled, it was holding the ball. The one where he got the fifty off him. Yeah, yeah. And never got the fifty and they're saying that's wrong. They don't want players to be, you know, um doing that as a bait thing to try and get a fifty. There was a number Dagos got tackled uh, on the wing. Received the handball, got tackled. It was just holding the ball straight away. So I don't know whether the prior opportunity was there. Side bottom tackled Chera. Chera dropped it. And side bottom got pinged for slinging Chera. Chera goal from that. Yeah. There was a lot of really... I reckon half the goals in that third quarter, they got from some some suspect free kicks. Yeah, oh, I think it was not some. Um... I thought it was ludicrous. I mean, even it was surprising that even McRae mentioned it. He said they... It actually was. Uh, and, and no sanction from the AFL on that one. I'm, uh, I'm surprised they haven't come out and yeah, but he given, said, a, given him a please explain. He said it politely. He said uh, they got the rub of the green. He felt they got the rub of the green. He didn't just come out and say the umpiring was shit. I mean, the best one I've quoted this on before is remember Malthouse in 2000 after we lost too long. I think we had a seven goal lead. And after the game, the press conference, he said, I'm not allowed to comment on how poor the umpiring was. <laughs> that was, good. That was, the, that was all uh, Sheedy was all about the aliens on the field back in the day. Yeah. Wasn't there there's so three there's, aliens there's on the field. Yeah. So they got on top and they look like that's it. It's going to be a case of they're going to blow us apart and it's yeah. probably going to be the one that shatters the confidence going into the finals and potentially we could have played into the finals. Last quarter, we're about 25 points down with about still 15 minutes gone or something. 
Um, they had a few chances. They blew them. Cripps continued to just grab the ball. and I mean, he killed us, but he was given a lot of license to throw the ball at will. Yeah, he was... Uh, he was... Uh, look, there was some bodgy stuff for them too, but it was just huge. He just killed us. Maynard was great. Uh, sort of... Nobody really stood up and absolutely blitzed. It was sort of like everyone pitching in. At everyone, everyone put the put their bits in. And then uh, the man of the, the year, um, uh, Jamie Ellett. Was, oh, uh, was that after Ginnivan? So. Uh, uh, well, he did the mark, scored the goal. Well, I actually thought Ginnivan was going to get called for blocking. Yeah, I know. And then and then at the end, when he scored, I would have, wouldn't have been surprised how things were running in that day. So with some of the umpiring. Yeah. So four goals down, look like that's it. You know, if this is just going to play out to sort of what it is and they could potentially just put the foot down and that's, we're gone. I think like if each goal we kicked, they suddenly became like, oh, hang on. Last week's happened, the, the loss to Melbourne. The yeah. pressure came. And as Collingwood, they know that you know, Collingwood uh, has been coming back all year with these sort of things. So yeah. a bit of doubt uh, in the a heads. A lot of doubt. Yeah. So you had Cox goal. You had Elliot take that really nice mark over the pack, which I, I was waiting for him to ping Johnson for putting the knee in the back also. Because <laughs> just the way the umpire... Because yeah. Johnson and Elliot both went up. Oh, so no, I was like, that was... So you can't do that. We actually, got, we got pinged on, on the weekend by somebody going up for a mark. I remember. Who was it? Was that... Uh, Hoskin Elliott or something? Somebody went up for a mark. Yeah, I think it's Hoskin Elliott. No, unrealistic they attempt. Him, yeah, unrealistic attempt. So, but that's, what, that's the sort of game it was. That third quarter was terrible. Oh, yeah, yeah was I remember a, that. Unrealistic attempt. So I thought, are you kidding me? The ball was coming. Yeah, but that's the thing. is like that whole, That third quarter, the umpiring was so poor and it was so trigger happy in their favour. Is, is that when they gave us... Is that the last quarter when we got... Ash Johnson got the blocking free kick? Yeah. Was that, was, that was the other one after after the first Elliott goal. Yeah. He got the blocking free kick. And they were doing that all day. I mean, they, they kept doing well, that okay. all day there. And we got nothing. And then they paid one. So you go... All right. So you talk about things that were overlooked. Silvani could just wrestle Cox out of every rucking oh, contest. Right. He was grabbing his jump by... It's, it wasn't hard to see. How, how can somebody that's, you know, 210... Versus somebody who's, I don't know, I don't know what's the one, he's 194 or whatever he is. And he's actually getting, muscling him out or doing something. You could see. He, he wasn't had, muscling him he out. Actually, actually he actually had the jumper like this. You see the collar was getting dragged yeah, a lot of the time. It's just ridiculous. He just uh, he gets hammered uh, in the ruck, you know. They just think, oh, you got to do whatever you got to do. You're 210, you can take it. But yeah, when it's there, it's there, you pay it. I, I, I don't know. Like I've commented this years. I think Colin should be releasing statements regularly and just saying, we're going to inquire about what the rules are in relation to Mason Cox, just to sort of put it out there in the in the public. Yeah, well, that's back in the cloak days too. He, he was uh, he never got a fair fair crack at it back in 2011, 12, sort of yeah. those years. You could manhandle him and nothing would happen. Yeah, but I mean, it's happened to Cox so often. It's Always. It's really frustrating, uh, especially that one, because that, if you remember when Steve McKee used to ruck you, that's what he used to do. He used to wrestle them around. And that's why they brought in the rule that you can't do that sort of stuff anymore. Apparently, unless it's to Mason Cox. Then you can just well, do... you can... Wrestling's one thing, but not grabbing him, not grabbing the jump. I mean, that's that's just told the man. There's, well, no, there's no doubt about it. You're just constantly pushing him away from the ball. So there was obviously some sort of instruction to say, look, just don't let him get a hand to it. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll mop up because we have a superior midfield. Um, but yeah, that was really, really frustrating. Yeah, that third quarter. Yeah. But in the end, we've won. What do you think of Voss as a coach? Curious. Uh, I was watching the the TV, the footy TV shows, and they said, "Oh, Voss is considered a success coming eighth, and he's ninth, at ninth and he hasn't made the eight. And then last year, though, they were considered a failure without making it. And it's like, well, what's the, what's the difference? You, you got this team that you should have gelled. I mean, they haven't got anyone. New. Well, Sarah, Sarah's the, Sarah, yeah. Sarah's the only new player they've had in it." But all the other guys have been there. Like the, the team looks good on paper. And it's just they, they get not a lot of anything. They've had a lot of injuries over the years. But the thing is, I was saying this to you previously, Voss reminds me exactly of Nathan Buckley. It's just win the contested ball. That's it. Win the contested ball. Yeah. Win the contested ball. There's no plan outside of that. It's just win the contested ball. And then there'll be quarters where they'll look brilliant. And then there'll be quarters where they just look absolute shit. They'll go and push someone like Melbourne. And then they'll lose to someone like Adelaide, which is exactly like Buckley would beat a top four team and then would lose to a uh, bottom four team. Yeah, when you watch it, win the contested ball is great and win, win around the clearances is great. But then you've got to do something and you've got to be clean. And the problem is they're, actually, they're not clean once they win it. And, and therefore, they're not clean going into the forward line. And it's going to stuff them. I mean, they had, I don't know, 65 inside 50s. But all they were doing was just getting it and bombing it. And they were just hoping Kerno or, yeah. or Mackay would just take the big grab. It was all... 
one of the one of the crummers would actually pick it up from from being spoiled. That's, so it was just poor. Well, the interesting. Way the game. Look, look at the way we played the game to come back and win, where a lot of the players were just sort of direct, especially that last one. You know, Nick Dagos to Maynard, really nice slicing kick into the centre. Pendlebury marks, turns around, kicks it to Ginnivan, who blocks, and Elliot is yeah. running on the outside. It was all orchestrated. And Matthew Lloyd was talking about now, sort of other uh, journalists are talking about Colin was doing situational training where they learn how to play the last couple of minutes. Which... Tim McRae said that. He said they play one team against the other team, one team's winning, one team's losing. What do you got to do to, to keep in front and what do you got to do to get in front? Well, well, I know Clarkson actually started that at Hawthorne. I know okay. he was doing it and so McRae was there when Clarkson was there. So you, you look at like um, Matthew Lloyd was almost in awe of a game. They know what they're doing in that last yeah. couple of minutes. They pointed at that Melbourne game where they go, they didn't panic. They just sort of wall contact, let the ball get taken out for another stoppage. Um, they didn't try and do anything too silly. It was just controlling the moment. But compared to Carlton, it was just all panic. Yeah. And especially that last kick, which was, they were, you know, just kicking long to Colonel McKay all game. And then that last play where they kicked it to the pocket and Howe just took an uncontested chest mark. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that was about. It, yeah. Did they expect him to run into Although it? They weren't doing it all day. They were, they were trying to get a big mark all day. So I don't know what they were expecting. So I, I with Carlton, with, with that spine of McKay, Kerno, Weedering, um, and they've got sort of a few other guys rotating for the other position. And then the midfield of Cripps, Walsh. I mean, he didn't play, but, you know, generally. And then they got, like, runners like Saad and that. They Cheryl, be top Cheryl looks all right. Cheryl, oh, well, he was a top five. Yeah, yeah so, he looks good. So how they're not in the top eight, uh, they should be in the top four. But you know what's really funny is I remember, like, after we beat in the first time around, people going, oh, if they paid that free to Walsh at the end, we'd be on top. Yeah, okay. mate, that's just, uh, it could have been, would have been just crap. But it's just sort of funny. They actually, that's their perception is they're on top. Like we're pretty much everyone I know Collingwood is like, well, maybe we'll squeeze into the eight. Like I thought we'd be bottom six. These guys think, oh, we'll be top four. That's where we belong. Oh, they were, all the Carlton supporters I know were so confident this year. We're going to, we're going to, we got the team. We got Voss. We got, yeah, actually not, not we got Voss. We got rid of the, the old coach. You know, yeah. we're, we're going to be up there. We're going to make top four. We're going to challenge and bananas. Any final thoughts about the game? Uh, it was a joy to watch. It was. <laughs> All Australian team was named. I uh, saw that. No Josh Dagos. Uh, no. The final, the, yeah. they cut it down from the 44. I haven't seen the final. Oh, thing. he I wasn't saw, in I saw it. The, uh, yeah. Maynard was. Josh Dagos wasn't. Yeah. Uh, Josh Dagos, I think, has probably been the premier specialist wing in the league. Yeah, but they're not doing it. So they're not uh, picking for, they're picking a midfielder. They're yeah, not right. about picking a, win, a winger. And often like with that, all Australian team, they pick on basically, it's not like one season, it's like once you've got a body of work behind you, yeah. they start picking, which is really nice. We actually surprised Nick Dacos wasn't in the squad. Uh, I didn't think he'd make the final squad, but I thought he'd be in the 40 or whatever it was. I thought he'd definitely be in that as as what he, yeah, the, the what he did for the, for the year. Definitely. His, his stats compare really favourably to the people they chose in his place. Yeah. Um, and... I'd say that he's more important to Collingwood than some of those players at the Vets. Oh, and just the impact. It's not just the stats. Then it's the impact yeah. of those particular well, stats. more important. Yeah. So are you surprised he wasn't in the squad? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, he won the Norwich Rising Star with a record amount of votes. Everyone okay. voted him, you know, to win it, which shows what a dominant year he had. And I think the Koenig was second. But I, I'm actually really flabbergasted that they did not pick him. I was reading... So... He got a Norwich Rising Star, but in some other first year or whatever play, he didn't even get top three or something. That Jai Newcomb won it, and I think so. I, I don't know. But it's sure. a different way that yeah. they, they. But they I think rank it's judged it. on a couple couple of years, not okay. just one. Yeah, all right. But yeah, I mean, I I really think it's ridiculous that he wasn't in. I don't know how he didn't get, how he didn't get into to at least at least the extended squad. And he's, he's like I said, his stats are really really favourable compared to you know, all the other guys that he, you know, I think, yeah, they well, kick goals. Well, I, I can't imagine the other, those other defenders that you're talking about were kicking goals and getting the possessions and getting the, the meters gained and getting the tackles. It's like, he's, he's it was complete. Like everything was a complete player on all the stats. Yeah. Playing Geelong. Yeah. Forts. Tough. Like, uh, the people that are always, uh, hard for us are the people that have got good, forwards like big to tall timber you know we always had trouble with west coast because they had the tall timber 
this one with uh, with Tomahawk and uh, well Cameron loves this. Cameron. He loves this one as a GB. No, yes. that, that's that's going to be hard. Now we just got to look at what we did last time when we were up. Yeah, they overran us, but how did we do that? You know, but I think it's going to be tough. But I reckon their midfield is yeah. You, know, you got Dangerfield and so on, but they're they're not the players that I don't think that they once were. So I reckon I reckon what a chance. I don't think it's going to be tough. So what's your tip for it? Oh, that's if Collingwood. That's if Collingwood all the time. <laughs> oh, I spoke to Spook. He says he's going to tip along by 10 goals. But, <laughs> no, I mean, look, we played him once before. We got to six goals up. So we're capable of dominating him, but then once it turned, we're unable to arrest that. Yeah, but that was we early, early in the season. Hopefully they've learned a few things. Uh, I mean, the there. one thing Collingwood's shown, as they did against Carlton that third quarter, is, is when momentum turns, they really struggle. Yeah, to stop well, it. well, I, I think the, without... Adams in, we can't win. Yeah, is the way I say it. You know, because Adams and the goalie are the people that get the ball for us. And I think without Adams in there as a hard nut to go in and get the ball, you know, as as part of, it, I think we don't win. So if he's not there, it's gonna be it's gonna be, yeah, I'd say Geelong. But if we if he's there, I think we've got a chance. What do you think about um, finally actually just smashing someone? <laughs> I want to win by more, as, as, as they say. I always want to win by more. As, but, as but, I remember when I was a kid, so I want to win by more. So but, about 13 games have been relatively close. Mm. And then even if you go back to before the streak where they beat St Kilda, you know, St Kilda came back, St Kilda got the lead. Well, Freo was the only one. Is that the highest for the So Freo, the, for the ironically, season? the two highest ones were Freo and Melbourne. Um, yeah, okay. The first time, Melbourne, Queen's birthday. Was that 27? Yeah, something like 27. And uh, Freo was, what, 38 or something like that. And those were the two games like we dominated for the whole game. There was no lapses. Every other game has been a lapse. Like we might, we generally don't start that well, but I mean, we might start well and then just like against Essendon and then go missing for two quarters. Yeah. Um, and then come back. So, I mean, Adelaide, North, North dominated us for three quarters. We sort of struggle to find that mojo until we're pressed. I mean, it'd be nice yeah. if they could actually manufacture that without being I five goals down. Yeah, and I, but I think the key part of that is because we, you know, you're talking about, but, but because we don't, we keep losing... Uh, the clearances and keep losing the the contested ball. It goes in to the other the other yeah. goes the other way too much. If we can actually even just break even at that point, the way that we rebound it, I reckon would win easy. But we're always on the back foot because it's always getting pushed back into our defence before we start getting forward. And you see it so many times. You know they're getting out of the centre or they're getting out of the midfield and just going forward. So then we're going to have to we have to then set up everything from the half back line all the time. Whereas if we can stop it and set it up further up the ground, then we've got a lot more chance of, of getting the goals. So one of my problems too, and I've said this previously, is in the midfield clearances, it's not just that they're getting it, but they're getting it with a lot of space and time yeah. to get rid of it. And it's just, they're not setting up quite correctly to be defensive. I don't know if it's just they're waging, wagering on actually winning. The, the, the tap. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. Is that what they're doing? I, don't no, know. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they should, honestly, surely with Cameron and Cox rucking and both of them, a relatively inexperienced ruckman, you'd be thinking we should be a little bit defensive, but the whole year, the amount of times where the opposition just got on the ball, and it's not a column we're playing within two, three yeah. metres, or if there is, the opposition's got a teammate really a little bit distant who is in space, and they just handball the ball and find yeah, the clearance. Well, it looks like that's what they're doing. They're, they're trying to do their plays off their own ruck winning, winning the ball without doing you know, the defensive piece. So who should bring back? Adams, if he's fit, would come in presumably for... Um, what would he come with? Uh, McRae, I'd say. Yeah, well, McRae didn't have a great game. He looks like he still needs... I mean, it's his first game. It's his first game, but if you're talking about who's going to go, you'd yeah. think Adams and McRae is, is the, the I'd, easiest I'd actually like next year, when we're defending Premiers, for them to say to McRae, look, we're going to give you a month. So just get the tempo, get into it. Yeah. Uh, if they can, you know, if they can afford to do that, but... He looked like the tempo was just way too quick. Yeah, it takes you a while to get adjusted to go for him. And it was a really unusual game to bring him into, given I thought Callum Brown had his best game in about three years against Sydney. It was very, it was very unusual. I reckon they just must have tried, tried him for finals, see, see how he took it. Yeah, so maybe that's yeah, maybe that's a precaution in case Adams doesn't come up. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um. So, but if Adams comes in, it'll be for McRae. Would you bring Henry in? Who would you bring Henry in for? So when you think about who they're, they're running through the forward line... You Hoskin go, Elliott. Yeah, but if Hoskin Elliott was going to get dropped, he would have been dropped before now. Yeah, I know, but I... I... So he obviously, he obviously plays the role that they ask him to play. 
whatever that role is, because I, I can't pick oh, it. Oh, but the, the role will be, you know what it'll be? It won't be that he gets, like, 25 possessions. It'll be that he's running some defensive zone, yeah, but, which but, they and, trust him. Yeah, and so so Henry doesn't do that. So Oscar now, Henry plays close to the forward line, so maybe he just can't run up and down, Henry. He just hasn't got oh, the fitness. Two fitness. Years into yeah, he hasn't got the fitness space to be able to do that. But, you know, Hoskin is a seasoned campaigner. He can run up and down, up and down the ground. That's probably what they want him for. So he can take that mark in the forward, in defence, and then continue running through to the forward line, whereas Henry can't. And Nathan Kruger comes back in the VFL against Carlton. I think it was Carlton were playing uh, in the finals. Would you consider bringing him up at some point? I can't see where he fits. What about McStay? Where do you see he fits? <laughs> Uh, that's a new year and a new discussion I don't, I don't know I don't know I don't know where it fits but you know it's actually interesting I was watching um, uh, SEN's trade radio thing and when I say watching like they put it on YouTube and I was watching I can't even, don't know who talks about it but the guy who was doing the talking said the McStay thing's been done for ages mm-hmm. and he said that the like Collingwood was into Taranto Hill other two and Grundy was talking with other clubs and looking at Melbourne and Geelong. And then I saw on the couch when Alistair Clarkson did his first interview as North Melbourne coach. And he was talking about the trades. He goes, they're all done during the year. Yeah. He go. He just said, the trade period is just when they haggle all out all the details. Once the media finds out there's a trade happening, the trade's 80% there. I think we've talked about this before. The trade's 80% done. So yeah, you're right. Um, and then it's just a function of tweaking the, the, you know, yeah. the little things and putting a bow around the contract. I remember in done. 2015, I won't say who it was, but like I was speaking to a, a former Collingwood player and this is like about June or something. And he told me the Trelaw thing's done. He'll be at Collingwood mm. next year. Um, so that was like three, four months before, or four months before they actually did the trade. So I was just going to say that if they signed or moved to sign next day in June, and that's before Ash Johnson has come out and gone, oh, hang on, we can play this guy here mm. instead. Should they actually still honor any commitment they've made to McStay? Or should they turn around and go, look, circumstances have changed. You can stay at Brisbane. No, you got to do the deal. Really? Yep. Even though it's to, to the detriment of the club. Is it to the detriment of the club? We're not close enough in the internals of the club to say what. No, they, no, how, no. how they want McStay to play. Who's going to go? I mean, look, look. Let's look at every every team. You got between six and ten players are going to go. So I don't know which six to ten players are going to go out of Collingwood. So they've obviously got plans for what they want McStay to do and how they want McStay to to, to play well, for, about, for the next yeah, few years. And I talked about in relation to that. It's whether how how's the one who's probably vulnerable. And he's because you look at all the other forwards, Mychek, Johnson, Henry, if he stays. So Henry was they're saying his management's quite a bit distant from Collingwood in terms of salary. But these are the guys that McStay is potentially going to replace up forward. Kruger's another one. They're all either young or mid aged. I mm. mean, Mychek's the oldest, I think he's about 28, 29. But having said that, McStay's about 28 too. Then you go to defense more. Yeah, McStay's 26, isn't he? 20, it'll be 28 next year. All oh, right. And then you go to defense. Moore's like mid twenties. Yeah, 25, 26, 26, yeah. something like that. But the Howe's like about thirty three. So if they're eyeing McStay, can't get rid of Howe. He's still a, he's still a, he's still the best. He's the best mark in the competition. And I don't know why people don't accept that actually he's that. No, so, no, but I'm just saying. And he's it, he's come back this year as good as ever. But I'm, I mean, he's a little bit slower. Slower, but he can read the play. But I was going. I'm just saying, in terms of who McStay might come in for, you're sort of saying well, if they're preparing for something else. So they're going to turn him from a forward into a defender yeah, but that's the only way I can look at it like is well, who would you who does he displace up forward you got that forward line that they've been playing for about 10 weeks and then you got Kruger and Henry not in, the, in that side so if you we talked a bit before but like you know who do you bring in and who do you drop so you brought McStay and who gets dropped out of that forward line um, so what's the forward line at the moment you got uh, you got McStay oh, sorry you got Majacek Majacek you got Ginnivan, Johnson Ginnivan, Johnson McCreary um, Hoskin and Elliot, whoever the resting ruckman is, yeah. he'll go down. Look, jo- Johnson's, uh, sorry, Johnson's just come in. Joe, he's there for, it's been there, he's played whatever, seven games or whatever. You don't know whether he's, how he's going to go, you know, what, what's going to happen with but who him. Would you no, I like him. But yeah, who would you have in? Uh, oh, look, Johnson. Yeah, well, this is what I'm saying, is like, when they looked at McStay, the Johnson thing was probably the, the issue, so far off the radar. The, the issue is if you don't do that deal, in the year when you do a deal, no one's going to, they're not going to want to deal with you, Collingwood, and say, "Well, we did a deal, and now you're reneging on a deal." You know? Do, do you think that's going to be an issue after uh, Trelaw signed for twelve years, and they said, "Off you go, Stevenson, Phillips." You don't think they already have that reputation for oh, deal breaking? Yeah. 
it's a bit different. They were signed and the, they're still paying and all the rest. This is actually, you did a deal that you haven't even got them in for. So I, I look at how are you going to talk about it in the end, you know? I look at the same. It's like, hey, we've got a deal and we've broken it. So I, no, I'm just curious. Like in terms of they get mistake, I'm just, all I'm saying is if they had that organized in June and circumstances have changed, doesn't it become redundant to continue to pursue it? He's never kicked more than 30 goals in a season. He's, in this year, he played 20 games, I think it was, and eight of them he went goalless. He's not a... Dip, look, so it, 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 it depends what you, that, what they want to do with him, and it depends on, you know, he's a, he's a known entity, so that they've obviously got some plans on how to how they want to play and how they want to put him in. So it's not like, you know, McRae's done something else. So yeah, you wouldn't have known Johnson would, would jump up and, and do, do what he did or what he's done for the last you know, six weeks or whatever. I don't love I love McStay. I've barely, yeah. I've barely, I've barely seen him in the yeah. play because I don't watch Brisbane would you let, play. All right, so would you sign McStay and lose Henry if that... No. Okay, so I'm just saying, circumstances have changed. Yeah, but I don't, I don't want to lose Henry. I reckon he's got... The, he's well, got I, I, he's, he's, agree. I reckon he's, a, he's got a lot of potential. But this is what I'm saying. is like when they targeted McStay and where are now, they're two different... Look, players. I don't think we needed a McStay. I think we need. I think we needed a Tarant. I think we needed a, yeah. a, a midfielder in another... Yeah, Spook and I have been talking about. You needed to, a midfielder. I need a midfielder and not an outside midfielder. You need an inside mid. So that's what we need, which is proven because we're losing clearances and we're losing... We're losing the contested possession. That's what we need now. Uh, are we going to get Taranto? I don't know. What are you going to give up for him? Is that is he is he a Trelaw? We gave up what two first round draft picks for Trelaw. Are we going to go around the bend and give two first round drafts for, no, for, for Taranto? We're going to be we've got to be, have rocks in our head to do something like that. You can't do that. That was that was paying overs. We paid two first rounders for beams paying overs. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're the gullible club. I think. There was other motivations when they took oh, those players. Oh, look. Uh, I think the motivations that time was to vindicate the succession plan. That's no longer there. Yeah. Uh, and I think they might have some arsenal if they lose Grundy. So would you lose Grundy? I think Grundy would actually totally suit the way we play. The way we're playing and the way we play uh, out of defense and out of that. So he's, he's an okay tap Ruckman, but he's a gun big midfielder so which ruckman's gonna if he's going from if he's running from the 50 arcs which ruckman's gonna catch up with him no one so he's gonna be he should be able to get it out he should be able to out mark anyone who's smaller than him what he needs not a great mark though yeah but anyone who's smaller than him theoretically should out mark what he needs is some forward craft so what i would do i'd go get jonathan brown or someone i don't know and teach him how to play forward so instead of him always having to rest on the on the bench, you can actually put him forward. So the Cox, I don't think you can play Cox, you know, the three Ruckman. You can't play three. Yeah. yeah. But we're resting, we're resting the Ruckman at the moment in the forward line. So Grundy needs that as his rest position, but he doesn't know how to play forward. I don't, I think at this stage of career, he's not going to learn. Oh, anyone can learn. I think he can. I, Look, think, it's, I, I think you'd have to have some inherent uh, ability to actually exploit. Because if anyone could learn it, then... Anybody would be learning it. Yeah, but they never played him that way. No, but I'm saying, like, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about like guys like Cox could have learned to be a actual permanent forward, and you know, we see. Oh, but, but Cox doesn't play, play really... footy when he was 24. You know, no. he hadn't played. So it's, it's one thing when you when you've lived and breathed footy as you're growing up and all the rest of it. It's another thing when you're learning to play a game when you're already an adult. So I reckon. Well, I'm saying what I would do. I'd keep him. I'd get a like I said. I'm just picking Jonathan Brown. Pick. Some gun, ten and a half forward, a big like guy. Myself. Like you, yeah, yeah. Back, back in your days, in your playing days. Yeah. And teach him some forward craft so that he can rest there. Because he, he's a liability resting in the forward line at the moment. That, that doesn't quite work. Whereas the other two Ruckman, they can actually play that role. I reckon, it, I reckon it'd be perfect if you, once he's fit. Oh, well, we won't know until next year. When we, no, we, won't know. we won't know until next year. We won't know if he's going to stay, but I, I wouldn't get rid of him. Because everyone's going to want us to pay his salary again. It's ridiculous. Well, they never should have signed that contract. That was well, it was a five year. So the five years that which is now because two years is up is what it should be should have been done. No, 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 a so five year contract, not a seven year contract. Because he signed it in nineteen, and that first year was still his old contract. So the seven years didn't take place until a year after. He yeah, signed so I'm saying so. It's yeah. twenty. So two years of the first seven years are gone now. Only twenty one and twenty two. Well, they never should have signed it because I mean the other thing is we were saying is his whole game is athleticism. Is he still going to have that athleticism at thirty one? Oh, it should have been a five year. I can't. I, there's nothing else to say. It should have been five year. That's contract. when they should have actually floated him around. They should have said he's really hot at the moment. Um, we're not expecting to be 
dominant. I mean, they were coming off the grand final, so they probably thought they were a chance. But that's yeah. that's when they should have looked at replenishing the list because of all the terrible fucking list decisions they'd made. And they should have said, well, we have to give up something and we can get some top 10 picks back in here. Uh, no one should get more than five years. So I would have been happy to give them a oh, five-year contract, but no one should get more than five years because who knows in five years' time what's going to happen. But I'm saying you know? him coming off his AA year, dominant season... And Adelaide on the bottom, because I said I said at the time, flight him to Adelaide. This was before Adelaide finished last. Adelaide just picked, uh, paid two first rounders for Bryce Gibbs. For some, oh, you would have paid at that point. You would have paid two first rounders at, for Grundy without that. Oh, no, I was going to say Adelaide would have paid four first rounders. Oh, you, you would have paid two first rounders and a good player. Is basically what the, what the trade would have been. Yeah, I reckon uh, that's for what, trade with Grundy and pick you know fourth rounder or some stupid thing like but that. But I'm saying thing. it's like at that time they could have used him to replenish the list because of all the poor list decisions they'd I, made. I I think it suits I think he suits the game. Oh well, now but I'm, game. I'm talking about like years ago when yeah, they yeah. trade. No no I think he suits our game. I mean from now I'd look at it what do you get if you get rid of him if you get something really good then I'd be saying go for it. Oh if you get two first round picks all right but I don't think anyone's going, going to be willing well, to and, years, and we don't have to pay any of his salary. Yeah right. I don't think anyone's going to agree to that. Yeah well then it, like I said, I think he's. I think he's still. Mate, he's still a great player. I don't think he could do well for us in the way we play. So who's the tip against Geelong? We win by how much? Nineteen points. What's so it? with Taylor Adams, we win by nineteen points. Without Taylor Monas, we win by one point. Well, Spook says that I will lose by ten goals. All right. I'll say we win by three points. Let me ask you some other quick questions in relation to finals. Melbourne, Sydney. Uh Melbourne. Um. Brisbane, Richmond, which will be interesting. It will be down there, Brisbane. Uh, Brisbane. What's the other Bulldogs, Fremantle? Bulldogs, Freo. That's in Fremantle. Yeah. That's in Perth. Yeah, so, Freo. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you some housekeeping things about the AFL. <laughs> Alistair Clarkson, Coach of North. Yep, great. Essendon lose out. Wow, I'm shattered. Ben Rudden gets fired twice, pretty much. <laughs> they got the, he got pretty... feel sorry for him. But that was always going to happen once they change the once they change the president. I reckon when it was announced, he was we'll fired, see. and then they said, "No, no, he's not fired. It's still under review." If I was right, I would have said, "Just fuck off. This is you've treated me shit. Oh, you're you're look, a terrible he's, club." He's there for the, but he would have been there the last week for the players, not to go. You know, so that's 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 what he would have stayed that last week. Well, he knew he was gone. He knew yeah, he was done. Knew he was yeah, but he stayed there for the players for that last round. Well, ironically, I'm not trying to be cruel, but. Um, when we beat Carlton and knocked them out of the finals, we beat Essendon. That pretty much was the end of Rudden because they were doing well. Yeah, with they were on fire for yeah. a, four weeks or something before that. So, yeah. so good you know, season for Collingwood and the old enemy. All right, so Hurdy, there you go. Yeah, Hurdy coming back. Oh, they can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right, but I know. It's, mate, it's in the papers. It's in everything. It's like. Oh, well, we Corcoran's did, out. We did it on Twitter. We joked about Heard coming back. And yeah. Then it's like they're talking seriously about Yeah, they're talking absolutely seriously. I don't know how they how can consider it. I don't know either. And, and the other thing too is you take all the supplement scandal out of it. He hasn't coached for about 19 years. Yeah. He's been an assistant coach at GWS, but who cares? Um, and you're saying, well, let's bring this guy back. And the really, Spook and I always talk about this, the really beautiful thing about Collingwood is when they got McRae... And like everyone's falling in love with this guy, the way you, you know he talks straight and um, the bond he's developed with the players and that. It's like Collingwood always fail when they bring in their favourite sons. Yeah, no. Buckley, Shaw, Murray Weedman. Weedman. Um, this time, you know, they said, let's just go out of our fucking system. We need it. We need. We needed Matthews. We no, needed Malthouse to win us that premiership. Yeah. We needed the non Collingwood player to come in and show you a different way. Uh, yeah, whose name begins with M. <laughs> That's true. And mate, we're going to win the premiership. Essendon should surely be doing the same and just be saying, let's you'd, stay away from Essendon you'd, people. You'd think so. And you'd think, I was thinking they needed a, a previous AFL coach. And the only reason I think that is because that board and the coterie groups and all the rest of it to hear a background, I've, not just in the media, from personal sources, they um, they control their club. They're, they're, so the coach needs to be able to stand up to these people trying to sling them all these, you know, things at him. So he either needs someone to back him as the football operations manager, or, or he needs to be strong enough to say, "I'm going to do it my way." I'll get stuffed. Yeah, well, who's the existing coach? Well, the only the only one I, I thought of was Lyon, but you know, that could be able to do it. Oh, he'd be good. I, I, I actually think he's a good coach. I, I don't know if he wants to do it. 
yeah, I don't know if he wants to do it, but I reckon he'd actually be perfect because he'd just tell everyone to go go jump if, if necessary. And thanks to the exodus they had with Danaher and Saad and Fantasia, and now they're going to finish what they finish about. 13? 14? Yes, they'll have a top 10 pick again. They're getting a lot of young talent into that squad. Yeah, they are. Um, are they going to stay? Oh, I don't know. Uh, it, it's They're an interesting place because they've got a few players who have just sort of on the way out a few older ones but they've got some good mid-age players now whether they stay or not I don't know I mean some of them are probably going I'll make my decision after I see yeah who the coach is yeah you know so I just think they need to get away from there they need to yeah they need from, to get from the Essendon I reckon Lyon like out of when I was talking to other people I reckon Lyon would be a good coach for them for the next three four years oh look I, I think he'd, he'd snap them into shape but, um, I think the Essendon president when asked about her she just said no he should have and he didn't, which I don't know, it was, it was terrible. Uh, GWS appointed Adam Kingsley, who was sort of like the runner-up for Collingwood. Yeah. Clarkson's gone to North, which I don't know. Does do we take more seriously? Uh, I think it's a good thing for North to, it's to good have Clarkson for there for not just because he's a, yeah he's, he's a good coach, but just the presence of him and the, to, to give hope to the supporters uh, that someone's out there and you know that, that someone wanted to come to the club. And he'll he'll actually keep some of those young the young talent they've got because they got a bit of young talent there there. Do you think he'll be successful second time around? Yeah, what's successful? Premiership? No, not immediately. No, in five years. No. Why? because uh, I think North still got a long way to go to to get there, and I'm not sure Clarkson can do it again. I think there was to get Hawthorne where they were. You had. The two thousand the, the compromise drafts in 2010, 11, 12, and all the rest of the GWS yeah. and Gold Coast. So when he did that three-peat, so the two, I'll give him the 2008. Eight. Eight. But when he did the three-peat, no one could actually pick up any talent to top up a good list. Yeah. Because all the top talent went to GWS and, and Gold Coast. So if you were a, well, I'll just be calling, if you were calling, you can actually you can actually pick up anyone. You couldn't do any of this sort of stuff or, or even those other mid to to bottom you know top four well, well, other teams well, no. you couldn't do it so they they won two the best and that third one they got by default is the way i see it and you can't do that again so i'm not i reckon i'll be struggling to do oh, the same thing yeah i mean i look at the afternoon with um clarkson and not to undermine you know his success but i think with every premiership club you need some luck yeah in the draft and all that you look at melbourne they picked up petrarca they picked up that oliver gorn was a rookie pick they pick up these guys who were like superstars. You know, look at Richmond. They got Martin. He went in that draft where Melbourne took Trengove and Scully. Um, Hawthorne got Buddy Franklin and Jordan, uh, Jared Ruffhead. And then they got guys like Mitch Lewis and Sam Mitchell. Yeah, but Melbourne also, they lucked out with a lever and a May. So yeah. that, that was their... That was what won them premierships the way I said. Oh, know, oh, that, that, there's the draft and yeah. then they traded but for the actual saying, right you, people that they needed. You need a confluence of all these things yeah. to happen. Now, I don't know the, the Horn Francis, whether he'll stay, what sort of player will be. I don't know what the, the players they'll pick up this year. Yeah. Um, but like I was saying, at Hawthorne, all those things came together really well. And as you said, they played through a compromised era and they played in each grand final they played in state teams who didn't really have a lot of MCG. Yeah, yeah. Right. So again, like you said, there's a lot of things that that work for them to win those three. Yep. Uh, congratulations, Collingwood AFLW team, who kicked off their season by beating Carlton. Oh, is that great? It's just become. You know, <laughs> I just love the fact that we're now what one thirty to one twenty eight. Yeah, against yeah. Carlton so when we're when we're shattered for most of my growing up uh, years. Yeah, well, hopefully we can keep it that way. Any final thoughts? Um, Do you want to profess your love for Daniel McStay? Uh, you going to get his number on your back? No, I'm no. going to get uh, I don't right. know, number 60. Who's number 60? Tadu or something? All right, cool. Um, uh, it's a very uh, surprising but very pleasant season we've had so far this year. And I want to make, make it uh, long reign and continue. Let me just ask quickly, uh, what do you think going into the season? Where did you think we were going to... Oh, I, I thought at best we could be about six and I thought we'd be anywhere between about six and 10, 12, somewhere around that. I thought it would be around that area. If we luck, if we, everything went our way, I thought we might squeeze into the eight. Yeah. No, like I said, I thought we were going to be bottom six and the first about six rounds, I thought yeah, nothing's changed my opinion, but, and I said this previously, 
to see them actually evolve over the course of a year where it took Buckley like nine years to start addressing defensive deficiencies where, you know, they're getting sliced open the counter attack and that shit. So Sam actually think on the run and go, hang on, I've got to address this. It's happened two weeks in a row rather than wait eight years. It's, the team is smart, which you can't say. Look, the team has smarts in it yeah. for this year that you couldn't see before. That, that You can see them thinking in the situation on that game. The moments, as McRae says, you can see them thinking in the situation, the game, to change the way they need to do things to get the best result, which is great. It's not always going to work, but at least they're trying something something else. Actually, I forgot to mention this. Pendles was voted captain of the competition, league, whatever they call it. Captain of the year, was he? Yeah. Okay. So, would you change your captaincy? Would you give it to someone like McStay? <laughs> uh, would I change your captaincy? Yes. Because um, probably Adams is, is the way that I put it. I think Pendles such a leader that he doesn't need to be captain to do everything that he does. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Moore or Adams is probably the two that I'd pick. I don't know which one. So Nick Dacos? <laughs> uh, it's still a, bit, still a few years before I think uh, Nick Dacos can do it. He's asked to keep the 35. Yes. Would you keep? Let him keep it if yeah. you're the club? Yep. So, Def- definitely. Go, keep the 35. Just, uh, we've had it for six years or 10 years, however long it's been. That's enough. Give, give the, the, uh, the emotion for the son to, to play in his father's number. Yeah, I uh, like I've I've been saying it for years that I think that thing's ridiculous the yeah. rotation that they do. So any now any final thoughts? Go pies. Yeah, so we'll be back after the finals later. So yeah.